Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, it's so uh, uh, enjoyable to see the church uh, filled with uh, very meaningful messages right from the start. And as uh, PJ Uncle was telling, uh, whispering to my ear as I started that our uh, Christmas program has been very vitally blended with the very essence of Christmas and not only the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the whole plan of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has intended for each of us. So shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Father God, we are so grateful for this privilege to be in your presence. Lord, we are here to celebrate the biggest event in history when you came down as a man for salvation of us. We thank you and as you look into your word, we pray that you'll speak to us and you'll teach us. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So for today's message, I thought we'll focus on one of the most common verses that is being um, read quite often um, during our Christmas season. And this is from the Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 10. It says, be not afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Be not afraid, I'll bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. So the first one um, is the message of the angels is, do not be afraid. And if we look into our lives to see what is it that causes fear, the fear is that of uncertainty. The fear is of what will happen in future, the fear of what will happen after our death. Recently, I was just curious and I typed and Googled the last message of Dr. Billy Graham and I came across a spectacular message which he gave just before he died. And the absolute assurance with which a child of God could enter into the presence of God, leaving from earth uneventfully into a glorious future of being sure of what will happen is just a true and truly an amazing experience. And interestingly, as I was uh, coming to church, and if you stand between our uh, um, church and the next room, you can hear what is being relayed there, what is uh, through our internet, and there is a short, a few second lag there, okay? A few second lag there. Now what that means is that Something that is said here, you'll hear there after three seconds. Now, what am I coming to? I mean, I'm coming to what is going to happen to the church and the children of God on the day of a coming of our Lord. We know what is going to happen, that we will share in the glorious future in eternity with our Lord. And there is a lag. We know beforehand, but the world does not know. It is like standing in between and knowing here, knowing what is happening here, which is going to appear there a few seconds later. Now what is going to happen after our death, on the day of the Lord, when he comes, we know much ahead. So there is no reason for us to be afraid. But there's another component to this, in that God has given provisions at different times of history for us to be bold. In the Old Testament times, it was a leading of the Lord directly speaking to his people, parting the Red Sea, making the walls of Jericho collapse, leading them as a pillar of cloud, as a pillar of fire. And on the days of Jesus, he was physically with them to tell them, do not be afraid. When the disciples were afraid, while the turbulent waters were about to capsize the boat, Jesus said, do not be afraid. But what is it for today? Today we have the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that they were emboldened when the Holy Spirit was given to them. And the same disciples who hid themselves, who didn't want to be known along with Jesus Christ, were bold enough to proclaim the gospel, the good news of salvation for the rest of the world. So we need to examine ourselves and see, are we bold? Have we been emboldened by the Holy Spirit so that we need not be afraid? Interestingly, I came across this particular um, uh, a little girl whose name is Shania Motihar. This happened last year and this girl um, was traveling by an aircraft and then she was pleasantly surprised when she saw her dad step out of the cockpit 
And then she was so delighted and, the, you know, she was shouting or telling, Papa. And, you know, such a joy for you to know that the person at the cockpit is your father. And when God is navigating through our turbulent lives, we need not be afraid at all. So when we celebrate the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ, whatever our fears may be, whatever our uncertainties may be, whatever challenges we go through, we should take this word from the scripture when the angel said, do not be afraid. So the next one which I would like to focus on is the next phrase that he says, we bring good news. And what is this good news? The good news is that God became a man. Again, in an aircraft, this aircraft was flying and uh, the crew came as uh, we have children, we, I need to tell some stories. And the crew came and told uh, in the announcement, I have uh, uh, some good news and one bad news for everyone. What would you like to hear first? Everybody said, we want to hear the good news first. So one of the crew members announced that for everyone who was on that flight, there is a free return business class ticket. Wow, everybody was so delighted. That is so wonderful and that is so fabulous. Great. So what is the second good news? They said, okay, not only is there a return um, um, business class ticket, everybody gets 10,000 points extra, which can be redeemed for the most favorite, favorite gift in the airport which they reach. So there was so much of clapping and enjoyment and so much of a delight. What is the third good news? They said, the next snack that we serve is going to be a very delicious dish that is a rare one which is made of a South American cuisine. So they went on and on about the six good news. So everybody was delighted. Okay, now let's come to the bad news. So they asked, okay, now tell us what's the bad news. And the crew said, we don't have enough fuel to reach the airport. <laughs> so all the good news of the world becomes a bad news if we don't get past life on this earth. And it's similar to what we saw in the last kit. You know, every enjoyment comes to an end if you're not sure of what is going to happen. And that good news, that bad news has been made good news for humankind through the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why this good news is not just a good news, it's a great news. And that is the only news that each of us should ever know and should ever talk about. Otherwise, we tend to become very comfortable with the familiar story. And it's very interesting that the smaller children showed in their skit, right? Parents think it is just by osmosis that the children get to hear what they should be knowing. It is just assumed. But it is important that we prepare our children for the future of what they should know of God's plan of salvation and what is it that they have planned for, uh, what is it that God has planned for us. And the next one, what we see is, this is a news of greatest joy. Now if you ask, what is the matter of joy? If you ask children, in their minds they'll have all these candies that are there. So you can delight them by, with a pack of candies or a set of toffees. And other things that are of interest to older people are not going to interest them. If it's a young man, what is going to be news that is good news for him? That is romance, friends, and fun. And if things work out the way they are interested in, that is good news for them. That is great news for them. But not anything of candies or of anything of much older people. And once you get older, these are the things that give good news for people. They think that is a good news. The wealth, the power, the influence, the position, the qualification, and the additional degrees. And they get delighted with all this. But we know that all these are momentary and pass away. And it is like hearing the news in midair that there's not enough fuel to fly, touch down safely. So the only good news is the good news of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we get back, may we introspect and see whether we have understood the importance of this good news. Now why is this good news important? It is important because not only should we understand and imbibe and enjoy and experience this good news, we have been called to be responsible to share this good news, to talk about this good news, to share with people why that is important. 
because they have been after things which are of momentary value, but they do not know that without that fuel, they cannot enjoy anything of what has, that has been promised. It becomes invalid and null. And we need to start talking to that, to our children, that they have to be an integral part of sharing the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, I had, uh, we had some guests, and I had asked them for one of the treasured books that I was looking forward to getting, and I did get a copy of that book. And that book was written by Dr. John Scudder I, who's the grandfather of Ida Scudder, which was printed in 1818. And this book's title is The Redeemer's Last Command. And in that book, he talks about how each of us in different uh, phases of life should be, should be conscious and cognizant of sharing this good news. If you look at the contents, he talks about the duty of the ministers to Sabbath school teachers, to laymen, to legacies, to pious young men, to pious physicians, to theology students, to Christian mothers. He starts off with Christian mothers. How each one should be cognizant of the importance of teaching to others the importance of sharing this good news. I'll just read one paragraph from uh, page 13 in this, in the last command where he talks to the mothers about when parents should start teaching their children when they should share the good news. This he says, but you may inquire at what age shall we commence the training of our children that their ener energies may be brought to bear upon the salvation of a perishing world. This is uh, Dr. Ida's grandfather, who's a John Scudder one. I answer, this training should be commenced when the formation of conscience begins. When the first discriminations are made by themselves between right and wrong, between good and evil. It should be commenced when their sympathies begin to be developed, when the recital of a tale of woe will affect their little hearts and draw the tear from their eyes. We are creatures of sympathy. We act not unfrequently from sympathy and pray from sympathy. It was sympathy which constrained the Son of God to hasten to the help of a lost world. It was sympathy with him and with the heathen which induced the first movers of our missionary operations to send the gospel of, to the heathen. And it is sympathy which, if the cords are struck sufficiently early, will vibrate in the hearts of our children to every heathen want, and which will eventually, through the grace, make them giants to go up and take possession of the world in the name of Christ. Now, we know that uh, God's plan of salvation is for all. In this verse, that is how it concludes. It is a good news for all the nations. It is not confined to the Jews, not confined to the Christians. The good news is for every perishing soul. And that needs to be imbibed in the conscience of our children right from the time they know what is good and bad good and evil. And the Lord Jesus Christ tells, the gospel shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So may we prayerfully decide and resolve this Christmas season that we will share the good news of Jesus to at least double the number of people with whom we shared last year. So if we have not spoken the gospel message, salvation message to anyone, may we resolve that we will talk to just one person. If we have been speaking the last one year to two people, let us resolve we'll talk to four people this Christmas so that the aroma of Christ will spread far and wide. More and more will come into the fold of our Lord Jesus Christ and more and more will share in the joy an unending peace that we each are enjoying. So I would like to wind up with this, that we have the assurance of the presence of the Holy Spirit. God has told, fear not, for I am with you always. And we know that we have been given a good news, and the good news is of great joy. And that great joy is for all the people. That is what propelled people like John Scudder one to come. And that was in the late 1790s and 1795s when there was no aircraft, when there was no telephone, 
there was no internet. Those were the times they came because they were propelled with the passion for the heathen. And we are enjoying the blessings of what they had given. And uh, we have had several other missionaries who came from Europe and the United States and from far and wide. Now the times are becoming increasingly challenging. If we understand the magnitude of God's goodness to us, it is our duty to pass on that good news to the rest of the world because much has been given to us and much will be expected. May we pray? Father God, we thank you for this Christmas season. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that we need not fear because you have gone to prepare a place for us if it were not so, you would have told us earlier. And this place is an amazing place that is being prepared for us. And we pray, Lord, that this good news of salvation will be deeply personal to each of us. It will be so powerful that it propels us to share it with all those with whom you want us to share. So that your name will be glorified in all what we do. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I now take this opportunity to invite